so people you would just stack a bunch of heart of golds it would get, it would be like mini sunfire capes that gave you gold generation so and then you'd get actual sunfire capes <laughs> so you know you, you have right. something yeah it's yeah. to just layer on on top of that you just, and you just is, so much health the issue is armor and health together is actually a really strong statistic pairing because yeah um you, you don't need magic resist when you have health health counters out spell abilities so it's not that much of a concern uh, uh, here we go again. It counters out spells just as well as magic resist does, but then having armor obviously counters AD, and AD is usually what counters out physical, but, you know, that wasn't a concern, so we are into the game, we will be seeing, you know, what they're trying to change around, but right off the bat we have the quick Riven ban, so not allowing either Zion Spartan or Nintendo to use Riven, um, that's definitely a champion that they both like to use. Yep, I'm also thinking of other uh, potential switch-ups and bans that Kevin is a noob may want to do. Like I can, I can see them dropping either the Mundo or Soraka ban because you know we've seen dynamic before quite a bit ban out uh, Doctor Mundo. Uh, I can, uh, I can definitely see them looking to ban out Morgana. Actually, just get rid. Of, actually, we also uh, we got the Urgot ban as well. And so Shen and Urgot, like you said, um, Urgot, you know, didn't really crush them that last game. Urgot wasn't the issue that they fall behind. But here's the thing. You have to look at the things that hold your comp behind, and if you, you, they probably should ban a Morgana, but they have the first pick, so I'm assuming they're going to want to pick up Morgana with that first pick, but Urgot, if they hadn't fallen behind so early, there was the threat that Urgot was going to start, you know, having those swaps, start taking over the mid game, and we didn't see that happen because everyone else on the team was just crushing so hard, yeah. but Urgot was always a pressure, and the fact that they had Urgot, it pressured them into picking the Sivir pick, which maybe they don't necessarily want to pick. They want to pick a more aggressive AD, but they're like, dang, we ha we're playing against Urgot, well, we might as well pick Sivir. So now they don't have to do that. Banning Lee Sin, banning Mundo, I'm assuming we're going to pick a Mor Morgana here. We could allow Paradoxical to use it, but Paradoxical is just, he's always played Morgana extremely effectively. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So we get into Soraka, straight out in front here for Kevin's noob. Morgana is open. We could allow it to happen, but I don't know. We may, we may have, a, we may have Kevin's new try and counteract that somehow. Like, just we may try and find a, you know a lane that can farm uh, just as equally. Like we may even see like a Karthus pick or something very similar. And actually, uh, Team Dynamic picking up the Graves and Janet. When they originally started, that was uh, always the lane that they played. Yeah, just really comfortable <laughs> with it. Zig obviously wasn't part of the team at that point in time. He did switch in, so he's a little bit more comfortable with picking up that Corky. So Corky and Janna is going to be an option, and uh, we'll have to see, you know, how that's going to work out for them. Now, Corky and Janna, they have really aggressive, a lot of damage, but Soraka obviously will counter out some of that physical damage. The only concern with Soraka versus Janna is that uh, if you don't pair Soraka with an AD with a lot of bursts like Graves, mm -hmm. then you don't have enough damage to burst Soraka's shield, and that's what you want to do against Soraka. You want to burst down the shield so that you lose that AD effect. Oh, Janna. Burst, um, burst against Janna. Right, yeah, you want to... <laughs> What, I don't know what I said. You want to burst down that Janna shield so you uh, get rid of that AD effect. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see. The Soraka does make them a little bit tankier as the game progresses. They will be able to survive some of the burst damage that we saw they struggled against last game. And also, since Dynamic likes to run heavy physical teams, mm -hmm. uh, Soraka's armor buff is going to work very well against that. And if we build into, like, fast armor items and Aegis and whatnot. We're, th we're thinking about a lot of options. Nautilus a strong pick. Alistar a strong pick. We, get, we, we saw Skarner there as well. And we got, you know, the pull is a very strong option against, you know, someone very strong, you know, very tanky like uh, Udir. Just, you know, pull him back into the back line. Hey, you're surrounded. We can now pretty much just burst all of our damage onto you. And there it is. There's a Morgana pick, and I'm actually surprised that happened so late. But then again, you know, when you're picking when you're picking champs, picking your AP very early is not the wisest of decisions. So it just you know leaves the other teams like, all right, we already know what we're going to counter pick with. We're just going to go ahead and do it last. We're just going to pick all of our other stuff before then. But we got it. Dynamic has secured it for themselves once again, and Nautilus going to be grabbing that for Kevin as a noob. Potentially very, very strong jungler right now. One of the best in the game right now. And there's the Karthus. So we're looking to farm uh, equally as passive here at mid lane. And Karthus is definitely uh, definitely capable of getting all that farm he needs. Yeah, and the karthus Soraka combo, uh, it is pretty nice. You obviously have the mana late game. And Karthus a lot of times finds your, uh, you find yourself with a low mana pool. And so Soraka, since the changes, does have a lot more burst to mana. So we'll be okay there. But then obviously... 
not allowing the Soraka pick to the enemy when you have Karthus. So they have the double globals, um, can change any fight very quickly. Nah, uh, Nautilus, always one of the most aggressive junglers in the game, can look for, you know, really strong uh, ganks early on. Um, trying to think of who they're going to gank though and that's going to be a concern for them because bot yeah. lane is very safe right now morgana is going to be very safe in that mid lane unless you can bait out the spell shield which karthus really can't do karthus versus morgana there's not any killing potential there and zig actually running teemo versus <laughs> udir i was curious because udir top lane works very well against a number of melees and we've seen uh I'm sorry, not Zig, Zion Spartan running it. Uh, we've seen Zion Spartan running a number, you know, he usually runs those kind of melee tops, but we've also seen AD Nidalee from him, and we have seen some Teemo. So running Teemo versus Udir, you have enough range sustain damage where you can shut him out of lane early. Uh, usually Udir has enough sustain and has enough shield potential that he can be fine in the lane, and you don't have to worry so much about... Um, you know, any harass, but Teemo just has such an effective harass game, it's going to be difficult for Udir. And then as the game progresses, uh, if Teemo, you know, can take control of that lane, have map control with those shrooms, it'll be tough. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Zig wants a shout out to uh, All right, Calvin, Calvin, here's a shout out from Zig. Done. Loved forever. Mission accomplished. So we should, uh, <laughs> we'll be into this game in a little bit. And you know, Teemo, Teemo top lane, so we we've established you know Nautilus is gonna be in the jungle. Teemo's the one I'm gonna want to gank though, yeah. He is gonna be the one we're gonna gank, but Udir man, come on, he's got the taunt. He's got he's global taunt. So so crazy effective. But against a top lane like Udir, Teemo is just amazing mm -hmm. at taking out like very tanky, very sustainy tops like Udir, especially ones who have shields. Udir, Riven, very effective. Lee Sin, and you also have the blind. Gonna be very ineffective. So it's gonna be a very rough lane. Mm -hmm. For but Udir with, up top, but with the Nautilus gank, that is going to be a concern for Teemo is. early on. But well, it's going to be it's going to be a concern for Teemo early until he hits six, until he gets those mushrooms. Right. Because once Teemo hits six, it's it, it becomes a much worse time to try and get those ganks in on him. So we got we're going to be loading up into this game in just a little bit. We got two minutes before we end there, and you know Teemo is, I'm I'm excited to see this Teemo, you know, trying to do what he can do. You know, once, like I said before, once he hits six, he's going to have mushroom defense. He's going to be quite impenetrable, but we'll see what Nautilus can do. Nautilus can go ahead. He can get that blue. He can hit. He can just go ahead and start with the level two ganks immediately if he really desires, if they feel the Teemo is going to be that much of a threat. Yeah, and it should be um, pretty interesting to watch. Yeah, I haven't seen Teemo in competitive play in a while, and he, he always had great lane control. The concern is as team fights progress. And once you get into team fights, uh, how much he falls off. However, they already have a really strong team fight team. Um, so we have Morgana, obviously, for that AoE disable. We have Alistar to come in and just be, you know, a rampaging beast. Um, I, he's always a lot of fun to play. I always think of him as like the Hulk, even though Mundo is, you know, clearly the Hulk. But <laughs> Alistar comes in as well. We have the AoE damage follow up with Corky. Yeah. Morgana uh, and Janna, they both have, you know, their shields to protect. So they have an all-around just nasty team fight team, and they can use that to their advantage. So it doesn't really matter that Teemo's not going to be controlling fights because now what they can do is Teemo hard pushes top, and then they fight 4v4 all over the map. And their 4v4 potential is just so strong while Teemo is trying to, you know, get those advantages. Um, and we'll see how that works. Teemo is also very good at buff control and dragon control and, yeah. you know, baron control. When you start getting that um, those shrooms all over the place, it can be, you know, very strong and very yeah. difficult to deal with. And we also, you know, Karthus, Morgana. So we're, it's, I think it's going to be pretty safe to say that we're going to see a pretty well-formed Morgana, a pretty well-formed Karthus, too. So, it's, and it's, it's, it's definitely, that's definitely going to be a threat as we hit uh, later on. And uh, Teemo, magic resist, attack speed, armor, we're just, uh, we're just looking to... We're just looking to put as much. I mean, it's really as we can. it's going to be AD team. I've never seen an AP team in competitive right. play. There's really no reason to run it. Um, yeah. You know, I had a, uh, wanted to check real quick what he's going to be running for defensive yeah. stuff. But the movement speed, the thing that's nice about the movement speed is he doesn't have to worry so much about um, the gank presence. But the ganks are still going to be very difficult to deal with because mm -hmm. even though uh, Timo is going to be as fast as he is. Uh, he is very squishy early on. He does have the blind, which will be nice for the damage. But if we have a flash stun in from Udir, follow it up with the Nautilus pull into the you know passive. Very quickly, you can drop Teemo down. 
Um, and that's, you know, that's going to be something they're going to have to watch out for. But we'll see whether or not we have any level one engage because uh, Team Dynamic, they definitely have a really strong level one. Mm -hmm. That might be something they're looking to do. If you have the fast Morgana snare into the blind uh, bush, follow it up with Alistar. We've seen it a number of times. Hey, it's saw, so much it, killing potential. We saw it tonight. Right, we saw, we it, saw it tonight, and Corky with the uh, Phosphorus yeah. Bomb as well, you can pick up that vision very quickly, you put yourself in a good situation, and so as a result, Soraka knows, okay, we want to be defensive in this lane, let's grab that yep. CV, we can wait for the Alistar ganks, because Alistar is one of the hardest gankers in the lane, yep. in the game, and we can also see what's going on level one, but... Alistar is really the biggest threat this game, and you know how aggressive he is. Karthus yeah. is immobile mid. He's one of the easiest ganking targets in the game. Well, Alistar just makes it that much easier. If Alistar runs into you, particularly level 6. Level 6, oh, yeah. Alistar comes in, tower dives you from, from behind. behind. And with Morgana to follow it up, th those are easy kills. I'm really concerned about how uh, Karthus is going to you know, survive that. And the big issue is that Kevin is a noob. They're going to need to get fast map control, uh, great ward coverage, so that they can keep an eye on Alistar. As long as they keep an eye on Alistar, they're good. If they don't, then very quickly Nintendo can run away with this. And you know, we saw, uh, if you watched our EU matches today, you can, we, you know, we saw Cypher Game 2 against Millennium just absolutely tear them apart with Alistar. Very early on, he was like something like 3-0 uh, and 1. He um, got both GP, you know, both of his GP10s, he got his uh, Philo Stone, he got his Heart of Gold, somewhere around like Ridiculously, or like nine, ten minutes. Right. So, and, and, and we saw you know, he had double at like six minutes. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. yeah, you're actually you're right. The mobility and uh, oracles was a little bit later. Yeah. But even so, we see Team Dynamic coming in. They are going to invade this blue. They didn't leave a ward behind. So a lot of times you see when you're going for aggressive invade, you'll leave a ward behind at your own blue um, so that there's not that threat of the counter invade. Yeah. That is an option here, but they will be able to uh, take this blue. And we'll have to see, you know, where Kevin is a noob is going to be going with it. They did drop a ward down here, but unfortunately weren't able to catch Team Dynamic as they passed. Yeah, I'm kind of... Um... I'm a little bit confused as to uh, Kevin's uh, Kevin is a noob's reasoning by like you know staying by the rating because they're relatively certain that you know that they're going to be invading blue but they could have, you know have you know a ward or something oh, Karthus. placed down here. Karthus, he's getting a little bit too ahead of himself. But he did see them though. The yeah. uh, you get a little bit of vision with your Karthus cues, so he knows they're up here. But it is going to be a pretty safe blue for them if they decide to take it. Um, yep. A little hesitant here, so maybe they want to see where people are on the map. They don't ha currently yeah. have any vision, but there they go. They have the ward down now, so they will go in for it and uh, be able to, you know, pick up this blue. They wanted to secure it. They wanted to make sure it was safe. But, you know, Nautilus is going to be starting out on red, which means he's going to be very quick access to go ahead, gank bottom. But, you know, we wanted to see if we could get any uh, advantage up on Teemo early. But since he's going to be a little bit further away... You know, that, that, that limits our availabilities to go ahead and gank up top lane. And even then, if we do see uh, Deathmonger actually decide to wander up top, he's going to wander through his own jungle mm -hmm. first to check the blue. And at that point, we're going to see Zion Spartan be a little bit more aware. It's like, hey, he's in the neighborhood. Maybe I shouldn't push as much. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious what Timo's thoughts on that, you know, ward are. And so you saw uh, Timo, because of the range damage, obviously doesn't need as many health potions, can right. get free harass onto Udyr, doesn't have to worry about regen as much. But Timo primarily picked up that ward to defend against Nautilus. And so Timo's like, all right, I need to watch out for these ganks. That's a huge threat early. Let me have this ward for my lane. Oh, I've got to use it to defend us at blue. Um, it, it was a good call to use that ward. It made sure that they weren't going to be intercepted or anything. And, and there you go. But, now we see and now they do see Nautilus. But the concern is if Nautilus comes around another ganking path, then maybe Teemo doesn't have vision and, you know, is still vulnerable. But, you know, what? I still think Nautilus is actually going to be taking that path through. Right, that's true. Because he's, he's, well, you know, early on, he's not the most mobile guy. I mean, he's pretty, his movement right. speed isn't the greatest. But, you know, that's why you have the hook to try and, you know, recoup for that. So I highly doubt he's actually just going to be going it straight up through the lane. He's going to take the shortest path available, which means passing by his own blue. So I really, I really do agree with the ward placement. That, plus, if we ever do decide to go back, 
by another place it down there that's our gank protection and oh. also we'll see when they have blue but nintendo being caught out here right in front of dragon we got the headbutt pushing uh <laughs> deathmonger on the back snare's and now, gonna come in though little kevin is now a little bit trapped and we actually got a 4v4 right in front of uh, dragon four minutes on in we got the bind coming out of 18 and right now ridiculously low on corky but karthus does manage to pick up the first blood on to janna and corky does also go down to graves and we actually see a nice little uh, a little lead here for kevin as a noob yeah, and the flash from Vitine able to pick up that Corky kill was huge. Um, you know, very quickly able to kind of win that fight with their AOE. I thought that maybe Team Dynamic would, you know, pinch on, in on them, be able to pick up some kills with their disables very quickly. But, you know, Kevin is a noob grouping up very well as well. And so a quick 2-0 advantage. So far, Zion Spartan has been doing pretty well in this top lane, but uh, not really able to, you know, harass down Regeron as much as you might hope. And that's the issue with Udir. Very quickly, he has the shield. He is going to be very safe in that lane. So it's going to be a slight CS advantage for Teemo. But even so, uh, Retron is going to be fine. And then once he starts getting some tanky items um, or some regen to go along with his shield, he will be okay uh, sustaining in this lane. And we also see Nintendo now wandering up the top lane. And we actually, uh, we may just try and secure a kill here on uh, onto to uh, Red Yoron. He's actually going into the bush. He's actually getting a little bit too aggressive. And now Nintendo, he's nearby. Headbutt pulverized. Can we get it into the wall? A little bit of a delay. We're just keeping him there just for a little while longer. We get some auto attacks. We get one more attack. And yes, we will. Zion Spartan does get that kill. And you can see the perfect. We waited. We didn't do the headbutt full. We didn't do the full combo right away. Because when you push him to a wall, there is a little bit of a stun delay of, you know, where, you know, all the movement that they're missing out on it's like it's a kind of it's like a it's like a soft stun right so we waited until it was done we get the pulverized and we kept through there there longer but now deathmonger here in the mid paradoxical spell shield just in time we'll be getting away safe yeah, and even so, they probably didn't have enough damage to follow up on it, but what it did do is allow Paradoxical to sit in lane a little bit longer and take an advantage over Karthus, since he forced Karthus back with his uh, with a little bit of damage, hitting that snare. Deathmonger actually coming back in on him, wants to be aggressive, not allow him to get this free farm and push into the tower. And so, you know, the lane will be pretty even, but Paradoxical will have a uh, level 6, so that is going to be a threat for Karthus. Now that we have the level 6, there's going to be a lot more kills, and Teemo, with that early advantage over Udyr, um, already 20 CS ahead and one kill ahead, that's going to be really difficult for Udyr to stop that lane from snowballing, because Teemo is just so aggressive early in the game. But you know what? To counteract that, though, we do have quite a bit of an advantage for Kevin's bot lane, and we already, we've already seen the support and the AD carry for uh, Dynamic, fall before in that earlier fight that we had in front of Dragon. So we do have, we they missed out on quite a bit of action bot Wayne. They missed out on a few creeps, they're missing out on some gold, they're missing out on some experience. Not to mention that uh, V-Teen was actually one of those to get the kills. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, definitely a concern for Corky, but Corky and Janet is generally a safe enough lane that even with the early advantage for Graves, I don't think that they're going to be zoned out of lane at all. Corky can farm from range against anyone uh, just with his spam ability, but we have Deathmonger coming in here. Is he going to get the pull? He yeah, does he on the Zig. So actually, V-Time coming in as well, so it doesn't matter. There is the exhaust, and so just as I'm talking about how he's not going to be able yeah. to abuse it, he <laughs> does with the quick gank, and the issue yeah. is how aggressive of a ganker he is. Nintendo, in the meantime, though, coming down for this blue, they did pick him up with the ward. He knows Nautilus is bottom, but uh, we'll see You know, if, if he gets caught out position here because he does not have his flash. Yes, his flash is down and Regeron chasing in on him will get some nice damage, at least going to force him out, though he should generally be pretty safe, particularly once his team closes in on him. We had the CV come in from Soraka just to make sure we had some vision on Paradoxical and still we're actually getting a lot of harass here on Lil Kevin as he's running away, dropping those skittles in his path, but the blue for Dynamic is still up. We got the bind coming in on Lil Kevin, a little bit more harass. But you see now, we're seeing everyone nearby trying to contest Kevin's blue buff. Zion Spartan is going to be in here. He's going to start it out. He's going to drag it further away from Dynamics so they can't go ahead and try and ambush them from the bush. Ambush from the bush. Why did I say that? Eh, eh, right, whatever. Let's go with it. But we, <laughs> do, we do have the Teemo ward, and now Paradoxical coming in very aggressively. But Soraka oh, is here one. as well. There's the silence, which is going to ruin his plan. Mm. Paradoxical going down very quickly, and now here's the issue. Teemo was picked for the top lane control and for the map control so that they can maybe try and deny these blues, but they aren't going to be able to do it. So little Kevin is going to be able to get this blue. He will be able to farm very effectively there, and Paradoxical going down early. So yeah. um, we'll see You know how they respond. There is a ton of kill potential for Team Dynamic right now, but you know so far the big advantage is going to... Uh, 
Kevin is a noob. Yeah. So in paradoxical, I mean, if we had a little bit of a better positional advantage, if we just shifted over towards the buff just a little bit, we could have also have gotten Nautilus in on that ult, and we could have gotten the stun, and we probably could have gotten away. But since we only got one person on that, we only got little Kevin, we only got Karthus, we only had one stun, and you know what? We've said it before, Spell Shield doesn't do a whole lot against physical damage. Yeah, and so uh, we do see everyone kind of going back, setting their places. Um, some nice damage going on to Graves while he's not there. Alistar is level 6 now. He is going to be passing that blue buff to Morgana. And so now Morgana, the main goal is going to be pushing Karthus underneath the tower. And Karthus can farm very well again, uh, underneath the tower. But what it does is it opens up the opportunities for those tower dives, like we said. Um, or you'd actually Morgana might, might just want to hold it back up here. Um, you, I would generally think you're going to push it. But if Morgana can catch Karthus out in the open, there's always the threat that she just walks up, mm -hmm. throws on the spell shield, throws on the ultimate, picks up a quick kill. But we also see the offensive board come in for Morgana in the tri road area by race because what you see a lot of Morganas do if they get the advantage in lane they throw down the pool push the lane to tower walk around steal the wraiths walk back in the lane continue farming so we could start de you know denying quite a bit of farm here from deathmonger I mean he, he does have a little bit of a lead he does have what you know he's one on one Alstar 001 so he's got you know just just enough of a lead there yeah, we could start seeing to deny it, and we actually see Lil Kevin getting caught out a little bit. We did have the ward place of Paradox was there with the bind to get more harass on him. And he probably could have gone in for that kill there with his ultimate. Uh, actually, the ignite was down. I, yeah. I thought the ignite was back up. Uh, it will be up in like 30 seconds, so the next time he hits, he does have that killing potential. But so far, we see you know the top lane, huge advantage for Zion Spartan, just constant harass. And actually, he is going in. There's the ultimate, oh, the nice flash, flash from Karthus, but then oh. the bind misses. So we have two quick flash, uh, flashes in a row. They are able to get out of there, but... Um, that is going to prevent Karthus from farming summons, so Morgana can take a farm advantage, push him underneath the tower, and deny some experience. Hey, Lil Kevin, despite the fact that he's ridiculously low, is still... St actually, no, now he's going back. So, now, yeah, I thought, you know, if he's going to be staying in lane, he's still ridiculously low. Like, one bind actually may just be enough to do him in. But we do have things coming in from He's Kevin. trying to stay in, so he can, yeah, you know, farm from a long range. Yeah, but, uh, oh, see, you know, we got to be careful. But here we got, we got the wish from Soraka to help keep him topped off because we knew he was in trouble. So now with a little bit of health, actually, you know, we, we did get, get a little bit of health back, but now that he's going back, we're kind of, we're kind of uh, wasting the wish a little bit. Actually. Right. Okay, he's staying around, going to grab the raids, come back around, and we're going to stay. But so there's the issue. They got the Soraka ultimate down, and, you know, it's not the biggest deal right now. It's not like it's the greatest game changer, but it's still really strong. And now Corky and Janna running in. They get a lot of damage. They baited out the heal onto Graves, and then Graves turning around with all the AoE onto Pixel. We have the heal going out, and they will have to get out of here, but still some nice AoE from Zig. Can he pick up the kill onto Ghost Terror? There's the flash out, and he actually Valkyries out of the way. The Janna ultimate, and then into the shield. The Karthus ultimate as well. We'll Can be we able to pick this up, damage? and no. there it goes. Wow. So the two-for-one exchange with the Karthus ultimate. That was a really, I mean, that was, I have, I gotta give credit, you know, Pixel was there on point, and man, Zig was very elusive, Valkyrie getting the right positional advantage we needed to, but, you know, we just had a little bit more damage on V team, and you know what, that's, uh, that, that could be a tribute, you know, we did, we did actually have a Dorn's Blade up on him for the longest time, too, I and mean, we could, we could tribute some of that to the early gold advantage we got, but now we see the Mushrooms coming into play and Nintendo's just gonna can we can we just lead Deathmonger through the forest now nah, he's gonna go ahead and walk on back yeah and so that almost became nasty real quick because uh <laughs> Nintendo he wanted to get that kill onto Udyr he knows all right here's how much control we have here's how aggressive we are I can burst down Udyr a little bit and now we're winning even more so Nautilus coming up kind of expecting that gank since Teemo is constantly pushing underneath the turret was able to prevent that but you know Teemo again just constant harass onto yep. Udyr is able to shut him down and so even though it's six to two for Kevin as a noob the gold advantage it's actually pretty even and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Teemo has a 50 CS advantage <laughs> over Udyr to your top. Yep. And you know what? With that mushroom forest, man, Deathmonger, if he even wants to make an attempt, if he wants to make an attempt on top lane, he's going to have no choice but to buy an oracles, clear out all the mushrooms slowly, because there's a lot of them, and then try and get our try and get our Genkin on sign. But you know what? It's just, it's not even worth it at this point. He's pushing way too hard. It would take way too much effort to try and clear all the shrooms to even attempt a gank. We might as well just go ahead, focus our attention elsewhere. Paradoxical, relatively safe. So right now, ganking opportunities, we're looking at bot. And we see him walking up through the bushes. 
And now, yep. Yeah, and now, V team is actually just, just uh, we're, we're keeping ourselves safely pushed. Dragon is here, and they know that Alistar is up there. The CV did catch him. Now they do have the ward coverage here, so they see them all at the wards. We have the oracles on Nintendo, but this is going to be a fast dragon. But unfortunately, it's going to also mean that we're probably going to have a fight. And we actually have the flashing from Nintendo. He's actually going to be able to get the pulverize, and there it is on top of the rest of them. I'm not positive if they stole it or not, they but did. Morgana they coming it. in, they and it. they do get that dragon, and then the burst onto Karthus. They barely don't finish him off, so now why they're not turning onto Graves. There's the snare onto Graves, so they can burst him down, but Udyr coming in on the back line, and Graves still in hot pursuit. The flash from Regeron trying to pick someone off, and he gets the ignite off onto Zig, but no damage to follow up with it, so no kills there. So uh, pretty successful play, and yeah, with the gold, you can see, uh, like you said, you yeah. caught it. Uh, they did get that dragon steal along with the kill. Phil, Kevin, why did your ult have to be down? That could have been, that could have been beautiful for you, man. But you know, we got science part here. We got the flash, two shot, two shot combo. Taking that little Kevin, but he's caught a little bit too far. The tiger trying to do all the damage he can, but the double kill come in. Sorak is now, and we can we move quick enough to get even more kills on this? Ready or on, trying to do what he can. Triple kill here onto the Udir. And, and so we'll team, see whether yeah. or not they can get Graves as well. Pixel going to uh, tank this for a little bit, but there's the exhaust. So Udyr, uh, we do have Graves. Graves is going to go down. Nautilus coming into Paradoxical. Alistar able to pick up that Graves kill. Paradoxical just barely able to get out of there. The rest of them, they are pretty low. They will have to watch out for it, but a fresh Corky is coming back into this fight. And if they disable long enough, which they do, Deathmonger is going down very fast. Has to burn the flash. But Corky, oh, dodging the, uh, yes. the bomb with that anchor hook. But at the same time, you saw how strong Zion Spartan is. And they stuck around a little <laughs> bit too long. They got a little bit greedy in that last fight. They know, oh, you know, hey, we did pretty well at that dragon fight. Um, you know, we didn't win it, but they were all pretty low. So let's take something while we can. And then Zion Spartan coming in there, cleaning things up. What? Zion Spartan is just so ridiculously fed right now. Look at the look at the Yordle, man. 4 0 126 creep kills over Udir, who is 57. He's near, you know, just a few more minutes in lane. Not only doubled, we may actually very well triple the creep kills for top for our top champs. This is that Tino's looking ugly, man. He can get you know, any any team fight presence that he has. Mm -hmm. Someone's dying. We're gonna have the poison. We're gonna have the blind. He's gonna be such a monster because he's so ridiculously well farmed, and because we're denying Radioran so much. And you see, Radioran, he knows in the situation he is now. He's already bought the heart of gold. He knows. Listen, I'm not gonna be getting too much gold here. I need to stack up. I need to start, you know, recouping for a little bit of my loss. Yeah, and now here's the thing. Um, we already know that Teemo is just so strong in top lane control and you know, dragon and whatnot. But for fights. Uh, you usually think of Teemo as being weak and falling off, but oh, no. Teemo has the blind. Teemo has plenty of AD uh, damage, and so when you couple that AD, you have a double AD comp that you pair with someone like Nautilus. In this case, it is Alistar and Morgana, and so having that pairing with that huge AoE CC up front, you know that Teemo is going to be safe, and the concern with Teemo in fights is that Teemo has very short range, but Paradoxical walking into Lil' Kevin. There's the snare no followed by the ultimate and the ignite, and we have the headbutt pulverize to clean things up. Now, unfortunately, Deathmonger coming in, throws off the ultimate, and the quick kill with the burst from Beeline. Uh, yeah. They will be able to pick that up. Not a kill steal, kill secured. We really did not want to see Paradoxical going anywhere. But I like that approach. It's like, oh, they're coming in to take the turret. Oh, that's no big deal. Wait, they're coming after me. Oh, my God. And then melts. Absolutely. We got the bind. We have the ult. And now we have Deathmonger up in front. Zig taking quite a little bit of damage. But we see the Janna ult. Perfect. Dispersing everyone. And they now have a nice little positional advantage because look at those shrooms. Perfectly there. If someone, if they decide to try and engage on this, the shroom, we're going to slow them down and we're going to be a perfect position. This entire top jungle is just completely controlled by Teemo. Uh, they will be very well set up for a Baron if they, you know, decide to pressure it at some point in time. Or Teemo can just sit here, you know, on his merry own way, pushing down the second tier top tower once again um, and, you know, the rest of the team, they can continue to pressure this control that they have all over the map. We do see Deathmonger, though. He does have an Oracles, so he can clear some of those wards. He can clear the Shrooms as well, but there's always the <laughs> there's threat. So you can bait them. it out. And so yeah. that's one thing that you always uh, often want to do against someone that has an Oracles. Maybe try and bait them out to come and, you know, clear your wards or something, and then you just pounce on them as a team. I'm just looking at how, how bad Red Yoran has got it. Go in yeah. for a last hit, lose a quarter of your health. That's his, that's the situation he's in right now. That's the, that's the power Zion Spartan has. Paradoxical getting a little bit more harassed here on Will Kevin and Nautilus. He really does.
have his workout cut out for him if he decides to wander up near top lane because there's just so much to try and clear here. Look at that, look at all the, all the just pure poison damage. And you know what? He also speaks a little bit to the rework. It wasn't, I wouldn't say like a rework, it was more of like a, more of like a bug fix for Teemo because if you oh, built but Teemo, Morgana, ooh, Morgana, Morgana coming in on Regeron, so not only is Teemo Teemo's crushing him, but Morgana is coming up as well. Uh, Teemo getting there. that. Didn't even need to be there. Teemo had it on his own. Yeah, he didn't want his team to get any of those kills. He was like, hey, back off, I got this. But um, he is going to be able to, you know, get that kill. And now we see Corky pushing bottom, but Deathmonger trying to come in here, gets the hook onto Pixel, and that's the one he wanted to hit because we saw the black shield on Paradoxical, but he's dropping quickly. So unfortunately, they need to get out of there. But in the meantime, Zig can get some pressure on this bottom turret. He will be able to push it down. Um, we'll see. Actually, a fight might still be breaking out here. Uh, it seemed like they should have gotten out of there, you know, by now. But uh, we do see them going back in onto Deathmonger. Not going to have enough damage, but Morgana maybe trying to bait in for, all, you know, all those low health targets so that you can get that perfect Morgana ult, or maybe even just stall for Corky. And I think that's what they're doing right now, is well, they're primarily stalling, but Soraka almost going down the Paradoxical, and it is working very well for Corky down in the bottom lane. Flash is not up for Paradoxical, so we're not going to get the best positional advantage we want. What we got ready on here is like, oh, that's a small mushroom, so that's a bad idea. But hey, Zig, bot tower, go on. He's going to continue the push while the rest of Kevin is here trying to defend it. So we got the ult coming in Paradoxical, but he is spell shielded. We're he not going to get that pop-up. Doesn't have enough mana though to finish it off. And while we did evade the ult, we are going to melt. And now Zion Spartan, now we're in trouble. Now we got that kill, and now we shut down. Lost all of that kill spree gold. He was 5 0 0, but that's a lot of money going out, man. Yeah, and so now they are going for Baron. They do have a pretty easy Baron team with Karthus. Udir and Nautilus will be very tanky there with Soraka. Graves going to be trying to take down this turret, but or, I'm sorry, trying to take down Zig. In the meantime, while he's chasing, we do have a fight coming up here, and they're going to try and poke them down, wear them down a little bit. Udir is pretty low, and so we'll see whether or not Nintendo can stop this. Uh, he does have a lot of burst potential, and Deathmonger and Red. Drawn, both getting very low. He could go in at any second now. Janna keeping them oh. in there. Won't let them leave that Baron, but here it is, the stun from Deathmonger onto Pixel, and here it is, the headbutt into the Pulverize. He doesn't quite have enough damage, but they were able to stop that Baron, and Corky, in the meantime, is coming in. Here's there the Valkyrie, going to pick up one kill onto Udir. No, the Can shield, Wait, just the barely able oh, to help it. I thought that was the Mushroom, it is a ward, but Zig will actually go in. We got the kill on Udir. Can we continue? But Graves is now here to try and get the defense, trying to focus down Zig, but we do have the shield from Pixel onto Zig, get a little, a little bit of reduction there, a little bit more AD if he decides to try and engage us. Nautilus does go down to Alstar, wave up there. Oh, up baiting him into the snare. Bait into the snare, Paradox will go ahead and finish it up. We'll take the blue, and you know what? Why not? We'll take Baron here. They got three guys down, they're not going to be able to contest us. Let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, and so uh, Dynamic losing the previous fight, threatening themselves with the Baron. It was you know kind of a concern. But unfortunately, uh, Kevin is a noob. They weren't able to quite sustain the damage. Udir was very low coming into the fight. And so Dynamic doing a nice job of stalling them for a little bit was able to prevent that while Corky was bottom. Separate their differences. If Graves was with them, then they would have gotten Baron. But then Corky would have been able to grab an inhibitor. And so uh, that nice map control from Dynamic allowed them to come up here, uh, stall the Baron, win the fight, and now get the Baron for themselves with the huge gold advantage that they've already accrued. And they are just incredibly strong in team fights. And what does Udir have to show for it? Udir is, you know, almost inconsequential at this yeah. point in the game because of how much control Teemo had in that top lane. <laughs> Udir can just drop, and it doesn't really even matter. The Teemo, yeah, it's, it's just so so a hundred, nearly a hundred creep kills ahead of his top lane fellow. That's just that's way too much. But I will say this much too: while we were going in on the Baron fight. We did see Pixel there with the dispersal and the Janna ult. If we actually blew Red Yoran away into Tornado and killed him, that would have been amazing. I was I, I thought that was gonna happen, barely nearly missed it. But it's okay. We managed to clear him out of the pit, secured Baron, and now now the push begins and now Dynamic is in such an absolute lead here. 8k in gold ahead. Kills, a little bit deceptive. There are only two ahead and kills, but there's so many objectives and just Teemo pushing like a boss. 
Yeah, and so we saw the split push that CLG has. Well, we have the Teemo split push this game. So Corky in the bottom lane has great control there. But oh, Teemo running after Ghost Hair, getting some nice damage. And now Regeron trying to chase him down. But Teemo is probably going to be too strong for him. Has the movement speed to get out of him, out of there. And while he's forcing them to uh, come up top, they're actually fighting bottom. Going to be able to take down that turret. We had the snare onto Paradoxical, but he is going to be able to back off. The, uh, the base turret does go down. And so now they are safe to attack that Nexus or um, attack that inhibitor while Teemo is still pressuring top. We got the bind coming in on Lil' Kevin, but uh, he does decide to clear it away. We, got, we actually got Quicksilver Sash on him right now just for that instant, but now Zig being pulled in by Deathmonger. We're trying to bait something up, but we got the Morgana ult now coming in. Zonia's Hourglass is proc. We got two guys at the end of that stun, but now Nintendo is in the middle of everything trying to get to the last advantage we need onto your deer. We got the Flash Pulverize, and that will do it, and Deathmonger is out here. One auto attack will do it. Morgana grabbing the double kill. We got Lil' Kevin once again still being caught out in front, and Zig will be able to catch that one but now we got the headbutt keeping ghost terror as soraka in place and now that's it there's that's the surrender, surrender and that last fight with the excellent kiting potential oh, yeah. from corky corky just constantly running backwards